Not so long ago, finding planets outside of our solar system was a pipe dream for astronomers. But now exoplanet discoveries are being made on a regular basis, with a few new planets being discovered each year thanks to increasingly powerful telescopes and detection technologies. But what happens when a planet is discovered and then abruptly vanishes? That's the situation scientists were in when Dagon, a large gas giant exoplanet first discovered by the Hubble telescope in 2004, mysteriously disappeared. There are instances where exoplanet prospects vanish after being discovered later by scientists. Later, observations at the same location can produce different results. It happens when you're looking for stuff in the far reaches of space and it's just part of the game. But it is just plain strange for an exoplanet to be repeatedly discovered, investigated in depth, and then mysteriously disappear. There was definitely something there, but what was it exactly? When does a planet cease to be one? What's also happening to the galaxies in the universe? Let's find out. Over 4,000 new exoplanets have been found and verified to be orbiting other stars. But occasionally, things are not as they seem. Formalholt b, one of the few exoplanets to have been directly photographed to date and thought to be a large world, is no different. This is the planet that circled the brilliant star Formalholt in the southern constellation Pisces Austrinus. It is barely 25 light years distant and was among the first exoplanets to receive a proper name, in this case, Dagon, because it is so adored. Formalholt is a very young star, perhaps only 400 million years old, compared to our Sun, which is 4.5 billion years old. So, while the presence of a debris ring still revolving around the star was anticipated, the discovery of one of the planets sculpting and shaping that disk came as a surprise. Dagon was discovered numerous times between 2004 and 2006. It was given a formal name in 2008 and had its planet status verified in 2012. Everything appeared to be rather simple until astronomers dug into further Hubble pictures from 2014. The astronomers were in for a larger surprise as they kept pointing Hubble towards Formal Holt and Formal Holt B to monitor the planet's evolution and conduct additional research. It seemed obvious that Formal Holt B was acting in a way that a legitimate planet should not. Formal Holt B doesn't resemble a planet in terms of both appearance and motion. It looks to be on an escape trajectory that will eventually take it away from its star rather than orbiting it like a planet would, which would have an elliptical orbit around its star. Alas, recent Hubble Space Telescope investigations revealed that Formal Holt B appears to have vanished. The findings imply that the beloved planet wasn't actually a planet after all, but rather a spreading dust cloud that resulted from the collision of two significant ice planets. Many people were disappointed by this Formal Holt B announcement. Although this outcome would eliminate one of the more intriguing exoplanets from history, it also makes a spectacular new discovery. According to the researchers, collisions like this in the Formal Holt system would take place about once every 200,000 years. So astronomers demonstrated incredible timing with these Hubble images. It is a major deal that we actually get to watch one because, according to astronomer Andres Gaspar of the University of Arizona, these collisions are incredibly uncommon. The dust cloud, which has dipped below the brightness threshold for Hubble to detect it, is now more than 300 million kilometers across, according to Gaspar and research co-author George Zika. The simulation of the cloud's course also reveals that it appears to be headed out of the formal hold system in the near future. According to Zika, all of our theories regarding how exoplanets and star systems develop are put to the ultimate test in the formal hold system. We do have evidence of such collisions in other systems, but none of this magnitude has been observed in our solar system. This is a blueprint of how planets destroy each other. According to the experts, the accident happened not too long ago, 
precisely before the initial photographs were captured. Since then, the dust cloud has grown and spread out, and Hubble can no longer see it. It has grown to a size roughly equal to that of the Earth's orbit around the Sun, which is much larger than any planet could possibly be, though very dispersed. The size of the dust particles is believed to be around one micrometer or one fiftieth that of a human hair. Even though Formal Holt B is no longer considered to be a planet by Hubble, researchers are nonetheless keen to continue their observations of it. The Formal Holt system will be investigated by the James Webb Space Telescope, the JWST, including through more direct imaging. It doesn't follow that there can't be other planets in the system that are still undiscovered just because Formal Holt B turned out to be a non-planet. After all, the circumstellar disk still envelops Formal Holt. According to observations from missions like Kepler and others, nearly all stars, including our Sun, have at least one planet. Many stars also have multiple planets. In fact, it is now thought that our galaxy contains more planets than stars. Massive stars, nonetheless, are not comparable to your automobile keys. They won't vanish in the washing machine or get buried under a stack of mail on your kitchen counter. However, a big star that scientists had been tracking for 10 years also seemed to have vanished entirely. Between 2001 and 2011, when many astronomical teams routinely observed the star to learn more about how stars end their lives, the star, which was in the very late stages of its life cycle, shone brightly. In contrast, the star's signal was completely absent in observations made in 2019. The mystery grew then. When scientists compared archival data from 2011 and 2016 in search of a hint as to why the star had vanished, their light was visible in the former but absent in the latter. The star mysteriously disappeared after 2011 without a trace. The star could have fallen into a black hole without the supernova that was previously believed to be a necessary component of such explosions, which is a very fascinating possibility, though it's a little challenging to pinpoint exactly what occurred. It all went down in a dwarf galaxy called PHL 293b, 75 million light years away. We lack the technology necessary to distinguish individual stars at that distance. However, there's a type of star called a luminous blue variable that has a recognizable light signature. These supergiant or hypergiant stars are huge and nearing the end of their existence. As a result, they are very bright and unstable, and as they experience outbursts and eruptions, their light can change greatly in brightness and spectrum. This pattern was evident in earlier scans of the dwarf galaxy and pointed to a star that was 2.5 to 3.5 million times as luminous as the Sun. So it came as a shock when scientists pointed out all four of the very large telescope optical telescopes of the European Southern Observatory at PHL 293b in August 2019. It would be quite unusual for a star of this size to vanish without igniting into a brilliant supernova. However, there is now growing proof that stars can actually fall into black holes without exploding into supernovae in recent years. A study on a giant red star that rapidly brightened before blinking out of existence in a galaxy 22 million light years away was released in 2017. It led researchers to hypothesize that the star had conducted a failed supernova before collapsing. Based on their findings, the team believes the star in PHL 293b was in an eruptive state between 2001 and 2011. From this point, there are two main possibilities. The star's first change is that it got a little bit fainter and veiled in a cloud of dust as it ejected material into the space around it, similar to the dust cloud that may or may not have covered the Milky Way's red giant star Betelgeuse two years ago. 
the star may have continued erupting in this scenario from behind its cloud of dust, but we can no longer see it because, well, a cloud of dust. A cloud of hot dust was ruled out between 2009 and 2019 by near-infrared observations. However, mid-infrared measurements that could confirm or rule out a cloud of cooler dust have not been made yet. Thus, the possibility is still very much open. The other possibility is that the eruption represented the star's final moments before it abruptly ended after 2011 when it fell back into a black hole. It would be a pair instability supernova in which the star is blown to smithereens rather than collapsing. If the star's original mass was between 85 and 120 times that of the Sun. Like a brilliant blue variable, a big star would be expected to create a supernova afterglow that shines in the sky for at least five years after the kaboom. Yet it's not inconceivable that the star underwent an undiscovered supernova. With the available information, it is impossible to determine for definite. Future measurements at various wavelengths will be necessary to solve the riddle of the missing star. However, more than just exoplanets and stars are vanishing. The fact that space is expanding faster than ever is one of humanity's biggest discoveries about the universe. A galaxy appears to move away from us more quickly the further it is from us, and this recession speed seems to increase through time. You would think that eventually these galaxies would move away from us faster than the speed of light, rendering them invisible to us and impossible for us to ever search. So how many Earth-observable galaxies have dropped out of sight? About 13.8 billion years ago, the Big Bang created the universe as we know it, and the first stars formed between a few tens and a few hundreds of millions of years later. That first light has travelled a great distance across intergalactic space and is only now reaching the eyes of mankind and our most advanced devices. However, not all galaxies are visible. Because of the mixture of radiation, neutrinos, ordinary matter, dark matter and dark energy that makes up our universe, it has expanded. That implies that light can travel up to 46 billion light years in the course of the universe. Naturally, that doesn't imply that an object 46 billion light years away from us today will ever emit anything that we can see. It implies that an object would be 46 billion light years away today if it had emitted light 13.8 billion years ago from a very close distance, and the light would be arriving now, 13.8 billion years later. That is the furthest we can see in the observable universe. In total, this indicates that we may theoretically detect 2 trillion galaxies. There are now more of them than ever before, and as time passes, more will come to light. As long as they have stars, all of the galaxies we have ever been able to detect can continue to be observed, along with any new ones, theoretically. That is unchanged even by the acceleration of the universe's expansion. As long as a distant object emits photons, light from that object will continue to come as long as the universe keeps expanding. In that respect, zero galaxies have vanished from view. But the universe's expansion will result in the following two phenomena, especially given how quickly it is expanding. It implies that there will eventually be a limit to how far away we may ever view distant objects and that there is a limit to the distance at which a galaxy can be from us today and that this limit varies with time. The current sight limit is 46 billion light years, which is the furthest point we can currently view. We can also estimate the sight limit for the future and we discover that it is around 33% farther than the present visibility limit, 61 billion light years distant. This indicates that, given enough time, 
we will eventually be able to witness a total of around 4.7 trillion galaxies based on how volumes function. When we gaze into the furthest reaches of the universe, we frequently observe extinct galaxies in addition to gazing backwards in time. That means that 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang, the light these galaxies are currently releasing will never reach us. As you can see, the expansion of the universe is speeding. As the fabric of space expands, a distant galaxy not only appears to move away from us today, but will also appear to move away from us more quickly over time. Currently, galaxies that are 15 to 16 billion light years away from us are already accelerating away from us faster than the speed of light. This implies that we would never get to those galaxies, even if we left today in a spacecraft that moved arbitrarily close to the speed limit. It implies that neither the light we produce now can ever reach them, nor can the light they produce today ever reach us. According to that theory, 98.6% of the galaxies we will ever view are already extinct, and presently we can only reasonably access around 66 billion galaxies. In other words, there will be 4.7 trillion galaxies available for us to view in the future. And despite traveling at the speed of light, 4.634 trillion of them are already inaccessible forever. This is an issue that will only worsen over time. Assuming that there are 400 billion stars in each of the 66 billion galaxies, we may estimate that there are currently 60,000 stars that are obliterating from our field of vision every second. Just in the time it took you to watch me say that 300,000 stars were created together with another 200,000 with this. Of all, there is still a lot of the universe to discover. Just by staring at their old ancient lights as it approaches, we can still see the farthest galaxies, even those we can no longer reach. But as time goes on, we can access a smaller and smaller portion of the universe. Over 98% of all galaxies we'll ever view are currently out of our reach, even with arbitrarily advanced technology. And as time passes, almost five complete galaxies go over that line, from being reachable to being unreachable each year. The universe itself provides us with the best incentive to invest in reaching for the far-off stars and galaxies, since the ones we can reach are forever disappearing. Every second that passes, another distant chance at making contact disappears, possibly forever. Our view of the solar system has altered dramatically in recent years. From our central sun to Pluto, we grew up knowing exactly what the solar system looked like. We were certain there were nine planets in the solar system. However, in August 2006, astronomers agreed to declassify Pluto, our solar system's smallest and farthest planet, declaring that it should no longer be called a planet. Pluto was designated as a dwarf planet. These dwarf planets aren't massive enough to control their orbits, and unlike planets, they don't eliminate surplus material from their orbital path. When the number of planets in the solar system was reduced from 9 to 8, many individuals were forced to rethink their ideas about the solar system. To make matters worse, scientists announced in early 2016 that the Sun might be orbited by a gigantic ninth planet that has never been observed before. For those of us who are still mourning the loss of Pluto, Planet 9 has been a bit of a challenge to grasp. The potential world was called Planet 9 because it would replace Pluto as the solar system's ninth planet, if identified. However, some scientists and the general public continue to refer to Pluto as the ninth planet and instead refer to the new one as Planet X. Planet Next, or Giant Planet 5. This can be misleading because the term Planet X 
was also applied to a world originally thought to be the cause of anomalies in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. In any case, Planet 9, or Planet X as it's often known, may exist and is not on its way to destroying Earth, so it's not the same as the fabled Nibiru. The majority of our planets were discovered by looking at the sunlight reflected off them at optical wavelengths in the past. The sunlight we'd need to see to find such planets would have to travel from the sun to the item in question, reflect off it and then return to the observer. Until the late 18th century, our solar system was supposed to have only six planets – Mercury, Venus, Earth obviously, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn, all of which could be seen with even the simplest telescopes or even the naked eye in ideal conditions. Sir William Herschel, a renowned astronomer, didn't discover the existence of an icy blue planet orbiting the Sun from a distance roughly 18 times greater than that of Earth until 1781. It was originally thought to be a star, then a comet. It is around 1.8 billion miles, that's 2.9 billion kilometers, away from the Sun on average, but they are just about 1.6 billion miles apart during their closest approach, that's 2.6 billion kilometers. On the other hand, they could be 1.98 billion miles away, that's 3.2 billion kilometers. To complete one orbit around the Sun, Uranus takes 84 years. He is also credited with cataloguing an extra 800 double stars and 2,500 nebulas, which is an interesting side note. He was also the first astronomer to correctly describe the spiral structure of our Milky Way galaxy, according to Wikipedia. Sir Herschel nearly discovered Neptune, which has a fascinating history that will lead us farther down the Planet X rabbit hole. Still, for openers, it was discovered by a trio of scientists on September 23rd to 24th, 1846. A moon orbiting Neptune was identified rather quickly, but it took more than a century to uncover a second one. The scientific discoveries collected during Voyager 2's flyby in 1989 substantially increased our understanding of distant Neptune, including the finding of five new moons and confirmation of dark rings around the planet. However, something was missing from the equation. Even after Neptune's discovery, the peculiar orbits of several Kuiper Belt dwarf planets and other small ice objects remain a mystery. These have a propensity to follow orbits that congregate in large groups. Some scientists have speculated that a massive, yet-to-be-discovered planet may be lurking far beyond Pluto, based on the orbits. To begin, it's important to note that, according to NASA, Planet 9 currently exists only in principle, so don't start redrawing solar system maps just yet. However, some of the brightest minds in astronomy, the same ones who demoted Pluto, have proposed that a massive planet, most likely an ice giant, exists somewhere in the far reaches of our solar system, more than 20 times further away from the Sun than Neptune, which is currently the farthest planet, and about 2.8 billion miles from our favourite star. Planet 9 would be found in the Kuiper Belt, a disc-shaped region beyond Neptune's orbit packed with hundreds of thousands of frozen objects at a distance of more than 50 billion miles from the Sun. In that farthest region of space, astronomers have discovered unexplained clumping behaviour of certain ice dwarf planets, trans-Neptunian objects. Observing unexpected actions of celestial bodies and then investigating the cause is how many astronomical discoveries are discovered. Neptune was discovered in a similar fashion after its gravitational impact on Uranus was detected but unaccounted for. According to current estimates, Planet 9 may be 10 times as large as Earth and revolves 600 times farther from the Sun than our own planet does on average. The search for Planet 9 is currently underway, with powerful telescopes being used by astronomers all across the world. If such a planet exists, it would be located in the region of the Kuiper Belt that receives very little light or energy, many billions of kilometers beyond that pesky dwarf planet Pluto. Like many of the farthest planets, its orbit would be very elliptical. To what extent is this true? 
To complete one circle around the Sun, the planet would take between 7,400 and 18,500 years. Pluto, for example, has yet to complete one full cycle around the Sun since its discovery in 1930. One full revolution is anticipated to take 248 years. Furthermore, the subject of how Planet Nine came to remain open. According to evidence, Planet Nine formed billions of years ago alongside the other planets in our solar system. The planet formed much closer to the Sun in this scenario, at a time when the solar system was still in its infancy, and planets were just beginning to coalesce out of the surrounding gas and dust. It lingered near the big planet formation region before being scattered by Jupiter or Saturn. It then had its orbit altered by passing stars, and it only went through long enough to stir things up before disappearing once more. However, despite its size and orbital pattern, visual confirmation is still required before it can be officially designated as a known planet. Most scientists believe Planet Nine was an ice giant core blasted from a much smaller orbit during our solar system's turbulent creation. Of course, that raises the obvious question. If Planet Nine exists, why hasn't anyone seen it? Based on their tracking of Planet Nine's gravitational effect through the Kuiper Belt, researchers are convinced that it exists, although finding it could take years. Scanning a 10 to 20,000 year orbit pattern can take a lot of time for a number of reasons. For starters, at its farthest point from the Sun, this hypothetical planet would have no gravitational influence on the other planets, making its movements more difficult to detect. As a result, only approximately half of the orbit falls inside the searchable zone, making the search a guessing game, and one that takes a long time. As a result of its tremendous distance from the Sun and the fact that it does not produce any light of its own, it is extremely difficult to detect. However, there is a reason for optimism in the search for Planet Nine. There's no way to see Planet Nine from where it's thought to be located, because it's too far away. However, this year the Vera C. Rubin Observatory VRO, in Chile, which went online in 2021, will begin a 10-year survey of the skies. Thousands more Kuiper Belt objects are likely to be discovered as a result of this. Close investigation of their orbits may be able to confirm or reject Planet Nine's existence, as well as reveal information about its origin and location. And what happens if it doesn't? When the 3.2 gigapixel camera on the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope in Chile's Highlands is finished in 2023, it will be the largest digital camera ever built and be able to quickly take comprehensive photographs of the night sky. If Planet Nine isn't discovered before then, that amazing new telescope may be able to provide us with some answers. It has the potential to shed light not only on Planet Nine, but also on five or six other predicted distant objects of a similar nature, some with even longer orbits than Planet Nine, our most recent astronomical puzzle. The planet known as B Centauri ABB, or B Centauri B, after its discovery, challenged the knowledge of astronomers and scientists alike. This large planet lies in an environment that was previously thought to be too hostile for a planet to develop around a massive pair of extremely hot stars. According to the European Southern Observatory, which captured images of the planet from its very large telescope in the Chilean desert, no planets have previously been discovered around a star that was more than three times as big as the Sun until B Centauri b. As one of the most massive planets ever found, the B Centauri b is an exoplanet that exists outside of our solar system and is ten times as massive as Jupiter. Mark Janssen, an astronomy professor at Stockholm University and the study's principal investigator, stated that it completely changes the picture about massive stars as planets' hosts. The highly large and hot B-type twin star in the Centaurus constellation is at the core of a solar system. 
it produces a significant amount of high-energy ultraviolet and X-ray radiation, which strongly impacts the surrounding atmosphere and should operate against planet formation. It was once thought that it would be incredibly difficult for big planets to develop around B-type stars since they are thought to be quite corrosive and harmful. Everything is on a massive scale. The stars are bigger, the planet is bigger, and even the distances are bigger in this harsh environment, which is governed by intense radiation. According to research, the findings demonstrate that planets can exist in star systems that are far more massive than would be predicted from extrapolating from earlier findings. It has one of the broadest orbits ever found, measuring 100 times farther than the separation between Jupiter and the Sun. The planet's survival likely depends on its great distance from the pair of core stars. Jason predicted that there would be a general rise in the amount of time spent searching for planets around high-mass stars, both for the sake of finding them and of defining them in order to determine more precisely how they may have formed. While we wait for that, let's look at another massive planet that is nine times the size of Jupiter and forming in a violent way. In general, cooking a meal can be compared to how planets form in our universe. Both the ingredients and the cooking procedure used to create a planet are subject to change. A planet was observed by scientists using the Hubble Space Telescope as it underwent disk instability, a violent and dramatic event that has been compared to a flash fry. In this approach, the protoplanetary disk orbiting a star cools and is broken up into one or more planet mass fragments by gravity, rather than developing into a planet over time from a small core that gathers matter and gas. Hubble's resolution and lifespan proved to be a crucial missing piece in the puzzle, as astronomers have sought definitive proof of this process as a likely candidate in the formation of giant, Jupiter-like planets. The young star, thought to be only 2 million years old, is surrounded by a protoplanetary disk of dust and gas with a distinct spiral structure swirling around it. This is the location of the newly formed planet. That roughly corresponds to the time during planet formation in our solar system. At this time, the solar system is 4.6 billion years old. The study's principal author, Thane Curry of the Subaru Telescope and Eureka Scientific said, Nature is clever. It can produce planets in a range of different ways. The raw materials for every planet came from a circumstellar disk. The predominant idea for the formation of Jupiter's planet is known as core accretion, a bottom-up method in which planets trapped in the disk develop from tiny debris that circles a star and then collide and cling together to produce larger objects. Gas from the disk is then gradually accumulated into this core. The disk instability approach, in contrast, is a top-down model in which gravity causes a huge disk surrounding a star to quickly shatter into one or more planet mass fragments as the disk cools. The newly formed planet, known as AB Origi B, orbits its host star at an incredible distance of 8.6 billion miles, which is more than two times farther than Pluto is from the Sun. It is most likely about nine times more massive than Jupiter. If ever, it would take a very long time for the planet the size of Jupiter to develop at that distance. This leads scientists to the conclusion that this planet could not have formed at such a great distance without the disk instability. It also stands in stark contrast to what the generally recognized core accretion hypothesis predicts for planet formation. The near-infrared camera and multi-object spectrograph and space telescope imaging spectrograph data are combined in the new analysis. This data was compared to those obtained by the cutting-edge SCOXAO planet imaging instrument on Japan's 8.2-meter Subaru telescope, which is perched atop Mauna Kea in Hawaii. Given how difficult it is to distinguish complicated disk features unrelated to planets from complex disk features related to young planets, the amount of data from space and ground-based telescopes proved crucial. It is very difficult to interpret this system, according to Curry. This is just one of the reasons Hubble was necessary for the project. A clear image made it easier to distinguish between the light coming from the disk and any planets. 
The huge disk of dust and gas swirling around the star AB Origi is angled nearly face on to our perspective from Earth, which was made possible by nature itself. Curry underlined that Hubble's endurance was vital in assisting scientists in determining the protoplanet's orbit. At first, he had serious doubts that AB Origi B was a planet. The Hubble archived data and the imagery from Subaru were crucial in causing him to change his view. According to Curry, we could not detect this motion for about a year or two, but Hubble provided a time baseline combined with Subaru data of 13 years, which was sufficient to be able to detect orbital motion. Olivier Guillon of the University of Arizona in Tucson and Subaru Telescope in Hawaii claims that this result makes use of both ground and space-based observations and allows for the use of Hubble archive data to travel in time. Now that AB Origi B has been examined at several wavelengths, a dependable picture has developed. This new finding provides compelling evidence that some gas giant planets can originate via disk instability mechanisms. Gravity is ultimately all that matters since, one way or another, the byproducts of star creation will be drawn together by gravity to create planets. Astronomers can better understand the evolution of our own solar system by comprehending the early stages of the development of Jupiter-like planets. Future investigations into the chemistry of protoplanetary disks like AB Origi will be made possible by this discovery, particularly those using NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. On the other hand, the Transiting Exoplanet Satellite Survey TESS or TESS, a NASA mission, has discovered a bustling neighborhood just 33 light-years from Earth. It has a star in the center, a few planets orbiting that star, and at least two terrestrial Earth-sized worlds, according to the scientists that made the discovery of this alternate reality. It would take you roughly 330 years to reach this solar system-like region of the galaxy if you could move at a tenth of the speed of light. That is obviously not feasible for a number of reasons. However, we can draw a very accurate picture of this neighborhood by utilizing specialized Earth-born tools like telescopes and space-born spectrometers, possibly even the James Webb Space Telescope, once it's fully operational. The host star of the system, designated HD 260655, is a relatively tiny cold M dwarf, according to what we now know. M dwarfs are ten times more prevalent in the cosmos than our Sun a G-type main-sequence star, although being 10 times less massive. The inner planet, which is about 1.2 times larger and twice as massive as Earth, revolves around its star every 2.8 Earth days. The other alien world, which is 1.5 times larger and 3 times more massive than Earth, orbits at a distance of 5.7 Earth days. Both are regarded as rocky. Given the brightness of their stars, both of the planets in this system are among the greatest candidates for atmosphere research, according to Michelle Kunimoto of MIT's Kavli Institute for Astrophysics and Space Research, one of the discovery's main scientists. This comprises investigations that seek to respond to issues like, is there a volatile, rich atmosphere around these planets? And are there signs of water or carbon-based species? In other words, a protective layer similar to the ozone layer on Earth and living things similar to humans. According to Kunimoto, these planets are fantastic test beds for those explorations. OK, but before you get too excited, scientists underlined that the recently discovered rocky worlds of interest are probably not livable because they are likely too hot to support water and are located extremely close to their host star. According to the study, the core planet heats up to an estimated 818 degrees Fahrenheit. In comparison, the outer world maintains a comfortable 548 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't you consider that range outside the habitable zone? However, if you think you can cope with that extreme temperature, we won't stop you. Nevertheless, the search for habitable exoplanets could benefit greatly from learning more about these worlds. In other words, they might guide future research into the possibility of discovering planets in the habitable zone, 
Since its launch in 2018, NASA's TESS has been slowly finding exoplanets throughout the universe and has already compiled an incredible catalogue of these distant planets. It basically operates by looking for recurring dips in the luminosity of stars throughout the universe, as these fluctuations in light could indicate the passage of a planet in front of those stars. Consider looking at a lamp while someone passes by it to block your view. Even while you might not be able to determine who specifically blocked your view if you were very far away from the lamp, you might assume that someone did so because the light clearly went out for a little period. That is somewhat how it is with TESS. So while keeping an eye on the satellite's incoming data, Kunimoto discovered one of these dips. They were travelling from HD 260655, the star. The researchers came to the conclusion that there are indeed two planets orbiting the star in question after conducting a number of additional tests, one of which is the well-known gravitational wobble test, which examines whether the light dips are accompanied by some gravitational pull on the star itself. There are numerous multi-planet systems with five or six planets, particularly in the vicinity of tiny stars like this one. Hopefully, we'll discover more. And if we do discover others, perhaps one of them would be in the zone where humans can live. Optimistic thinking, right? TOI 849b, an oddball among wild things. On the scale of our galaxy, a totally weird planet circles a sun-like star some 730 light years away. The planet is unlike anything astronomers have ever seen, either in our own solar system or from afar. It is large, dense and tightly bound to its home star. With up to 40 Earths worth of material squeezed inside, the roasting world of TOI 849b is the largest rocky planet yet seen. Strangely, despite having essentially little atmosphere, TOI 849b's enormous weight suggests that it should be a massive gaseous globe like Jupiter. It is difficult to explain how such a world came into existence given what is known about how planets grow. A planet as large and dense as TOI 849b is extremely difficult to create without turning into a gas giant. Something went wrong during that routine procedure. Instead, according to experts, the planet is the exposed airless core of a giant planet that should have outgrown Jupiter. Planet searchers have discovered thousands of distant planets within the star fields of the galaxy over the past 10 years. The majority are undoubtedly extraterrestrial, falling into categories like super-Earths, rocky planets larger than ours but less than Neptune, or hot Jupiters, large gaseous planets in close orbits. But TOI 849b defies categorization. This world was also discovered by NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS, which is scouring 200,000 of the nearest, brightest stars for extraterrestrial life. A sliver of starlight was briefly obscured by the planet as it crossed the face of its star, revealing its presence. These ephemeral, gloomy transits showed that an alien world revolves around its star every 18 hours, which means that its surface is swelteringly hot at 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Additionally, test measurements revealed that the planet is 3.4 times as broad as Earth or 85% as wide as Neptune, making it an unusually large planet for one that is so close to its star. With the HARPS instrument at the La Silla Observatory in Chile, Additional studies of the host star's gravitational wobble revealed that while TOI 849b is roughly as wide as Neptune, it is at least twice as massive. TOI 849b is very dense given its size. The rocky planet may have a thin layer of atmosphere that is likely made of hydrogen and helium, but it does not contain nearly as much gas as a planet that size should. Because of its peculiar characteristics, it is likely the core of a gas giant planet, which should have become more massive than Jupiter. According to current theories of planet formation, planets develop from tiny seeds of rock and ice sown in the whirling disks of gas and dust that round young stars. While some planets like Earth accumulate a tiny amount of material and remain small, others, like Jupiter and Saturn, 
gather gas and expand into inflated worlds with enormous atmospheres. When a planet reaches a mass of around 10 Earth masses, a process known as runaway gas accretion starts, and the planet's gravity quickly pulls in nearby hydrogen and helium. It stands to reason that a seed with 40 Earth masses should have accumulated an incredibly incredible amount of gas. Yet TOI-849b does not currently appear to have done so. We already know that planets like TOI-849b are uncommon, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. We just need to figure out how and why. Our failure to thoroughly investigate Neptune is a significant loss, because planets of this size have turned out to be relatively prevalent in the Milky Way. It restricts our understanding of the solar system and the galaxy. There are nearly nine times as many planets in the galaxy that are the same size as Uranus and Neptune as there are planets that are much larger and are the same size as Jupiter and Saturn. A lot may be learned about the development of our own solar system from the impact scars that appear to be on the outermost planets. In order to improve our knowledge of how planetary systems are formed and where to hunt for planets that potentially support life, there is an increasing sense of urgency to explore Neptune. It takes a spaceship a long time to get to Neptune, and we've only done it once. NASA launched a nuclear-powered spacecraft called Voyager 2 in 1977 to pass by each of the solar system's large planets while taking advantage of a rare planetary alignment. Voyager 2 crossed Neptune in August 1989. The spacecraft's detection of a temperature in the atmosphere of about minus 360 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 220 degrees Celsius and wind speeds of up to 2,100 kilometers per hour during the encounter that revealed Neptune to be more active than previously thought, suggesting that the planet's interior heat may be responsible for these phenomena. Like Saturn and Jupiter, Neptune was described as a blue gas giant by Voyager 2's discovery of six new moons, Proteus, Larissa, Despina, Galatea, Thalassa and Naiad. Voyager 2 also discovered four new rings around Neptune. The blue color is due to the presence of methane gas in the environment. The largest storm, an anticyclone the size of Earth that resembled Jupiter's famous great red spot as seen by Voyager 2, roared across the planet's surface. The great dark spot was the name given to the enormous storm. Unlike Jupiter, Saturn and Pluto, which were photographed by the Galileo, Cassini and New Horizons missions in highly precise detail, Neptune and Uranus were captured by Voyager 2 in rather simplistic photographs. Therefore, even though we know Neptune has dark belts, dazzling clouds of methane ice and cyclonic storms, only a specialized expedition might reveal the specifics of the physics responsible for its atmospheric conditions. Over 30 years have passed in darkness. All of the close-ups and large images of Neptune's disk are from JPL's photo journal, which was assembled after Voyager made its final exit from the inner solar system. Voyager is largely responsible for what we actually know about Neptune. Voyager 2 significantly expanded our understanding of Neptune, but since then, progress has been slow due to the difficulty of using telescopes to observe the outer planets. Large ground-based observatories, like the Keck Observatory in Hawaii, have allowed for limited studies of Neptune's weather, but practically all of what is known about atmospheric characteristics comes from Voyager 2. Only 0.001 times as much sunshine hits Neptune as reaches Earth. Voyager 2's camera had to use a long exposure to capture images in such a dim environment. Unfortunately, it was moving too quickly for such to be possible without seriously causing image blur. For this reason, during its closest approach, thrusters were activated aboard Voyager 2 to help rotate the spacecraft and keep its camera pointed on Neptune. NASA's Deep Space Network antennas in Spain, Australia, Mexico and California had to be stretched to 230 feet or 70 meters due to the distance from Earth. 
Neptune's images from Voyager 2 took four hours to arrive on Earth. If we look at past spending, space explorations have cost enormous sums of money. There have already been previous projects that cost $6.3 billion, $25.4 billion, and over $160 billion. People who aren't particularly interested in science would probably respond by asking why we shouldn't spend so much money on Earth since we already have so many issues. Because space exploration would cover their costs, even private investors do not see the benefit of doing so. Neptune's exploration by NASA will profoundly impact our understanding of the universe, as the mission will not only pay for itself, but will also bring back a significant amount of money to Earth. So, why have the last three decades been spent ignoring Neptune? It wasn't wholly overlooked, after all. Ground-based telescopes and Hubble Space Telescope have investigated it, including the discovery of Dark Spot 2 in March 2019. But they can only learn so much about Neptune from a distance of 29 AU. That's 30 times the distance from Earth to the Sun. Neptune, on the other hand, has long been overlooked for a variety of good reasons. Trajectory limitations are the first to consider. Only once every 12 years is it possible to go to Neptune at a low cost. It all comes down to Jupiter and Neptune's respective positions. Robotic exploration is likewise constrained by a small budget, and reaching as far as Neptune is prohibitively expensive. The success of New Horizons at Pluto, where it found the largest known glacier in the solar system, a blue atmosphere and proof of an interior ocean of water ice demonstrates the value of a quick flyby mission. That is exactly what is being planned for the Trident mission, but it won't be heading to Neptune exclusively or even primarily. Triton, the largest of Neptune's 14 moons, which is considered geologically active and very definitely has an ocean beneath its surface, will be its intended target. Triton was once the sole known moon of Neptune, but thanks to Voyager 2's encounter, we now know that the gas giant has 14 other moons. Triton is the largest moon, and Voyager 2 was able to capture images of two-thirds of its surface when it was there. Nayad, Thalassa, Despina, Galatia, Larissa, Hippocamp, Proteus, Nereid, Halamede, Sal, Lamida, Samath, and Niso are the other 13 moons of Neptune that are now known about. Besides being Neptune's largest moon, Voyager 2 observed ice volcanoes on Triton's surface, with one of the plumes measuring over five miles high. Triton is also very active geologically. Liquid nitrogen, dust or methane molecules are hypotheses to be the source of these ice volcanoes on the moon. Triton is thought to be what is known as a captured moon, meaning it did not form at the same time as Neptune and orbited the planet later. Since the remaining 13 moons of Neptune are all barren rocks, this captured moon theory may also explain why Triton is Neptune's largest moon and the only one that is geologically active. Triton is so enormous that it has room for all 13 of the remaining moons with 621 miles or 1,000 kilometers to spare. The Trident flyby, more or less modeled on the New Horizons flyby of Pluto in 2015, would occur in 2038, after a 2026 launch. Additionally, NASA is developing a mission to explore Neptune called Neptune Odyssey, with a target launch date of 2031. Using infrared and visible light sensors, the spacecraft will be capable of taking high-quality images of Neptune and its satellites. The spacecraft won't arrive at its destination until 2043, at which point this will take place. So if we take a closer look, the project will start in 10 more years and we will have to wait for initial results for roughly 20 years. But the crucial point is that Neptune Odyssey might end up being the sole endeavor that has a chance of recovering all of its expenses. Exploring its moon, Triton, is the most thrilling aspect of the entire exploration. Why, you might wonder. According to scientists, diamonds may form in Neptune and Triton's ice layers. Their crystals fall exactly like Earth-like rain, creating a diamond ocean as a result. To pay for space travel, you would need to spend almost $50,000 on a 5-carat diamond. 
NASA requires only a heat-resistant robot. Do you recall the Wall E robot from the movie, for instance? In order to actually gather the diamonds for them, NASA will need to create something similar to that with heat-resistant features. Now is the moment to start thinking about investigating the ice giants up close and learning more about the fascinating diamond worlds of the solar system, as an other opportune alignment of the planets won't occur for another two generations. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.